A very good morning to you and welcome once again to Signature Morning here on Signature TV. My name is Godwin Sunday. This morning, we'll be doing an X-ray on the infrastructural development in the north. And joining me in this conversation is Bilal Ali, who will be put dotting the I's and them also crossing the T's this morning on infrastructural development in the north. Bilal is a public affairs analyst and we'll be talking this morning about some of these issues in the north. You're welcome to Signature Morning, Bilal. It's my pleasure, Godwin. All right, so Bilal, let's begin with um, Nasarawa State because we are trying to X-ray the north. Nasarawa State has, of recent, seen a lot of infrastructure development in terms of road construction and fly over, ongoing flyover construction in Nasrawa State. But apart from that, what do you make of this um, entire development starting from Nasrawa State, even in the north? Well, when we look at uh, infrastructural development, the north has a very, a very long way to go in terms of addressing the infrastructural deficits Looking at Nasarawa State today, it's a state which is blessed with abundant you know, mineral resources in there and whereby the government have been unable to tap these resources, you know, you know, based on the, you know, situation of the state today, they failed to make the state, uh, um, you know, attractive for foreign investors to come in there to you know tap from their own national resources in order to you know generate revenue for the state and also uh, increase you know the level of um, employment in the state today but uh, if you the, the government the present administration in Nasara state you know has you know made some moves to see how they can realize or in the industrializing the states by also um, hosting a conference and seeing how they could like seek partnership but before seeking partnership you need to make the your your economic environments attractive for investors and you need to put some necessary uh you know infrastructures infrastructures in place when you look at roads because you know they need you know good roads in order to transport raw materials and you know the logistics and other things and another issue hindering you know this um, investments is access to you know ele electricity and um, um, water resources and also security too at large because you know an environment which is not secured wouldn't be attractive for a foreigner to come in and you know uh, inject funds into that e e economy because there would always be like a setback as you, you know in that in that in that aspect all right so so bilal just over the weekend mm. nottingham's were speaking online on different uh, foyer and different forums and one of the things that they were saying was Telling Norton governors that we don't need another flyover. We don't. We're tired of the road construction. We need more. Is it that the Norton governors are investing less or they're investing more in infrastructural development and not human capital development? They are not investing more on in infrastructural development, and they are not investing on in social intervention programs because before even thinking about building roads you need to look at the basic and the amenities you know like um uh, you know electricity water you you get and also food too at large because there is no you know food security as it is in this in in, in this case and security security too it's a, a basic i mean you need to secure the people because if the people are not secure they can't you know go to their farms and their properties would not be you know protect protected and that is going to really you know cost the states a huge level of uh, economic downturn so first of all create this basic amenities you know try to see how you could like you know create jobs for the people uh, 
uh, invest more on social intervention uh, program because right now when you go to a place like nasarawa state to get today what you just see you, you don't know there are no industries what you just get to see is uh, you know billboards of political um, um campaigns uh, advertisement of political campaigns and also billboards of pol political constituency offices you know in this case it's more of like they've turned the political scape into an industry because people are not producing they're depending more on you know their people representing them in government so what they need to do is to create jobs you know have some social intervention programs where you what we need is skills you need to you know create some vocational you know centers for them to be able to you know get skills it could be maybe in the carpentry masonry you know things like this areas like this because right now the way the world is going through it's not just based on your formal education it's more of your vocational education because you need to provide services in order to be able to generate revenue for yourself because we have uh, we don't have enough uh, you know industries you know uh, uh, companies or multinationals that will be able to in uh, um, you know um, uh, take these people in there because everywhere it's 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 uh, everywhere it's filled up there are no vacancies so they need to train these young people so that they can be able to earn a living and also create jobs you know these are areas that they need to focus on because you're going to right, do go doing doing this you would be there 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 will be jobs available and it's going to keep the youths busy because when you look at the situation on the ground now, there's a whole a lot of you know, high level of un unemployment, and what you see this youth doing is, you know, you know, going to, you know, seeing politics as a, a, a as an industry, whereby they they waiting for every four four years to see how they could like cash out on the little, you know, the penuries that 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 they that they issue to them, you know. Because seeing people in political gatherings and all rented crowds, like paying people, giving them pennies, you know, to come out and support. So they, they, they feel maybe that's or maybe issuing, uh, uh, you know, sharing food items like bags of rice. That we don't we don't need all those things. We don't need all those things. What we need is empowerment. Like the young people need to be empowered. They need to have like a strategy, a framework that they could use in order to like actualize the social intervention programs invest on the people first before you think of you know going as far as like uh, building you know roads and other infrastructures but, but Bila, let's take this conversation to the far northeast and to travel down to yaya inua state which is a gumbe we now move down to yola and down to my degree but to a very large extent, Yola has been, um, Adamawa State has been uh, at the forefront of um, human capital development alongside infrastructural development. But it, it seems the people want more than just uh, infrastructural development. Or what do you make of the development even in the southeastern part of Nigeria despite being ravaged by Boko Haram? over close to a decade the development in the north is just nothing to write home about looking at the situation on ground looking at adamawa midugri you know uh, the insurgency has also made things worsen you know in these areas you know whereby they've uh, you know disrupted activities businesses have been like sh um, sh closed you get and also schools too and they also you know the federal government had to come up with a uh the, the, the not East development commission and which was struggling you know to see how they could actualize you know their their, their aims and, and, and objectives the governors are not doing well at all they're not performing well the northern governors have a forum what they need to come what they need to do is to come together you know have a common goal draft a strategy roadmap where that whereby everyone needs to follow in order to address these issues that they're facing look at the uh, cases of the, the almajari you know 
system i know it's really very very disheartening you know they need to create like an educational you know you know structure whereby they can you know adopt this kids into the systems you know whereby they go through the normal islamic you know educational system and also the western you know form of learning in order to read them out of the of, of, of but, the but, but, but statistics have shown uh, Bila, but statistics is showing that even the some of the indexes that was used to measure said that the southeast um, the northeast i beg your pardon the northeast have been enjoying certain form of development both um, with infrastructure and human capital development I, I, I don't know how I, I don't know how true or how accurate your you know your, your data is but me coming from the north is I'll tell you confidently that the people are yet to feel the impact of governance you get looking at Adamawa for example there is there are no industries over there no industries at all there are no the, the the governors are not creative you know they don't have that sense of innovation to see how they can attract foreign investors into these areas look at the northeast for example like we are very blessed with resources and agriculture and also you know we animal husbandry look at the the the, the, the high you know amounts of kettles that we have in this region nigeria today doesn't have like a dairy you know the factory whereby we produce milk and distribute to the you know nation at large we are importing milk at this you know at, 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 at this age and which is which, which which is very very wrong so it shows that like our kettles are out there wasting you know we need to see how we, they could invest in these areas agriculture is a very big industry and before even the 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 the, 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 um, um, the explore, exploration of like oil in nigeria today back then nigeria the revenue that we were you know getting as a country was being generated through agriculture you can see the days of the you know, pyramids of um, um, bags of ground nuts from from Kano, you know distributing food across the country and also even distributing it across borders to our neighboring countries like niger chad and benin and togo you get so back then we were way more better than we were way more better as a country because the educational system was good and all you know the people were able to like feel the impact of governance but right now it is nothing to write home about because what these people are just trying to do is to exploit the resources of their states and also you know you know oppress the people that they are representing in government in, in government Bila, in the local parlance nigerians will say this life is not balanced <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's even borrow the term for nigerians but let's travel back again let's travel to the north and travel to the north central states like kogi state states like mbenwe kwara and the plateau and some of those um, not central states will say to a very large extent they don't en they've not enjoyed the kind of um, road network in, in terms of infrastructural development like what the northeast have experienced so far and uh, lo looking at all, all of this can we say that the generality of the north has been uh, not been blessed with a balanced kind of leadership looking across the various geopolitical zones even as a center to the north definitely you can compare the devil level of development in the north and that of the south you know because um the leaders in the north have failed to come as a team in order to see how they could you know resolve the issues facing them you know as a region at large you know you know you get but you when you look at the south you're trying to find out there are more of like you know 
direct foreign investment in there they've tried their best to see how they could you know um, persuade foreign investors to inject funds into their economies you know i know but looking at the nuts today it's honestly speaking it's nothing to write home about the environment the economic environment isn't attractive for any you know uh, uh, foreign invest investor to you know inject funds into that you know you know economy insecurity is something the issues of in the issue of insecurity today is as a result of failed you know um, failed leadership whereby they've been unable to send these people to school provide quality education they failed to employ, empower the youth and provide employment you know so what's the, the, their last resort is go into you know so sort of vices like you know join the banditry and terrorism uh, I know and that's why you can't inv you know you know expect a foreign investor to you know roll out funds into an area whereby it's not it's not protected as already where there's a whole level of insecurity so the issue of insecurity the only way that they can combat insecurity is not just only by deploying troops to those places you need to go through you know the roots you know of these problems the root of this problem is unemployment they are really jobless they don't have anything to do they're not empowered so you need to empower these people because anybody who has something doing wouldn't even think of joining any form of uh, vice Bilala Kano Kaduna Sokoto and uh, some of the states have tend to enjoy some level of infrastructural development even in the arguments going on online we don't see people from taraba from kanu from sokoto how will you assess the development of infrastructure even within the northwestern part of nigeria when, when you go to the northwest the only place which is well developed is kanu because it's ease and economic hard people in sokoto people in sokoto and kaduna might not agree with you Bilal. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. I'm speaking facts because which industries do they have in Sokoto and uh, Taraba? There are no industries there. When you go to Kadu, you tend to find industries. You tend to find like uh, you know foreigners and like you know having beverage companies and other you know forms of uh, other in other industries. You you tend to find them there because it's an economic hub. You, you you get but this other you know states don't have you know um the capacity or any form of economic integration in order to attract these investors to come there so that's why majorly if you're thinking about business or maybe um, starting up a company and they're not a large the first thing that comes to your mind is canoe and not just that you just have to like you know do your feasibility studies to see how it can work because most of these companies too are already folding up they're already folding up because the economy is not favorable to them you know uh, no bad electricity you know bad road net road networks the infrastructure that i can see maybe thriving is that of the abuja uh, kaduna rail line and that of the kaduna to, to, to kano rail line you, you get which was initiated by the, the the buhari you know led administration they need to do more than that you know come together try to you know build a strategy you know whereby you can connect the six geopolitical zones by roads and rail in order to you know boost the economy because right now why you see the food the, the high rate of like foods and other you know commodities is, is transportation is one of the problems transportation because of the access of mobility you know of goods to all these places it's very expensive but when you have a rail line a rail system it will be way more easier and cheaper and make and, and to be able to facilitate trade across the six geopolitical zone seamlessly Bilal, we've looked at the northeast we've looked at the north central and by extension we look at we've looked at the northwest how will you assess the general infrastructural development even in the north in a scale of one to hundred <laughs> well the infrastructural development in the north i would just give it for me i would just give it 30 percent 
Bilal, I think that's too low, Bilal. You need to give them some accolades. Not, I, 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 I can't give them an accolades because there's nothing to write home about. There are no the people haven't felt the, the impact of governance over there. The leaders have failed. They failed we, uh, you know, as a, as a people. You, you, you get. So there's nothing to. It's not the infrastructure development. There's nothing to write home about. When you travel, when I travel back home, instead of seeing uh, industries or you know and uh, the factories, all I just all I get to see is political billboards and posters, you know, and that's what the people like are, are feeding on, waiting for their representatives to come, you know, maybe quarterly come back home and they go out there to see how they could like get some, you know. You know, some from tips from these people or maybe the the, 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 the the items that they share you know you know a cup of a cup of rice you know it, 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 it doesn't make sense at all this does that that's not the way that's not the way to to to, to drive development I could remember I saw something on the, on the uh, you know, on the on the internet whereby uh, the wife of of a, of a member of the House of Representatives was sharing sugar canes as a form of empowerment, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so people, it, it makes no sense because you have a budget, you have like allocation sent to you, you know, for your people, and whereby you have to, you know, create some empowerment programs. I know, so for them to be able to, like, you know earn a living and also create jobs right now what we need to do as a country is that we need to empower the young people for them to be able to create jobs because we don't really have more first of all we were thinking of you were even thinking of you know inviting foreign investors you need to look at the people first empower them let them you know create jobs at their old you know ends first before thinking of inviting foreign investors you get you get mm. Bilal, I, I, for one, I should have thought that um, your scale uh, should go higher and probably to 100 or over 100. But it's fair, it's your opinion. Mm -hmm. But let's let's even look at the, the, this your scale that you've given. What indexes have you put in place to be able to arrive even at that conclusion? God, I am from the north. I'm a northerner. You get. I visit home frequently. I don't have a lot of people within when you look at the statistics out there, you tend to find that the level of unemployment, when you're talking about poverty, when you're talking about insecurity, when you're talking about poor education, everything tilts towards the side of the north. And when it comes to the revenue and the allocations, no other region gets more than the north if you be so in that case this is as a result of bad leadership so some other people from other regions they've been trying to see how they could you know you know improve their regions are down play are down are down you know strengths and all and some other parts uh, the people what they all they do is to loot public funds and their their awards overseas to acquire foreign education you get acquire live luxurious life acquire properties across the world invest in polygamy you know these are things instead of empowering people or maybe investing you know or, or using such you know funds to also either, you know invest you know creates creates uh, you know um, companies create businesses you know produce you get my point that would be able that would, that's more better it's more better than maybe thinking about real estate or building houses all over you know and not even having people to like you know you know get access or me uh, to, to to those houses when you look at when you when you come to when you know in abuja you tend to see lots of like real estate projects out there estates out there land out there without people you know occupying those properties so it's more of like they are building keeping these properties keeping it you know for their you uh, their kids and their future their, their generations to come you know it's 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 it, 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 it's very very selfish of them very very selfish uh, on, on, honestly speaking it's more better than like i've seen a senator you get whereby he has like over you know over five rolls royce vehicles like in his garage like what, what are you using those things for like instead of using those funds to you know
create businesses and employ people it's way better it's way better than that Bilala, there is this there's another angle to this to it to the, the even to a lot of conversation within the north and one of the conversation is uh, the angle to the conversation is that um, we have a lot of saboteurs uh, been trying to sabotage the effort of the northern governors in terms of um, development general development in the north how correct is even this assertions there is no any form of sabotage there's no any form of sab sabotage where's the sabotage these people they get a whole lot of uh, you know allocations enough for them to like carry out development projects and power people within their various states you get but they are not you know delivering the dividends of democracy the impact of governance are not being felt by their own people you get what the northern governors have to do is to come you know as a forum to see how they can design an action plan to see how they can realize uh, um, developments within you know this region a long time a long time goes you know so these are the issues that they are facing as a oh, all right Bilal, just before we, we begin to pack our things to uh, leave the studio right right now let's talk about some of the recommendations what will you um, as a way of um, finding solution for the government right now what would be your recommendation even to the northern governors at this point in time first of all you need to look at education make sure that you know the ed educational sector you know it's well funded and they are they, they, they have the resources in order to boost education because while training generations of people with poor education how would you expect them to be able to solve problems the essence of going to school is to be able to acquire knowledge to solve real to real, real life problems you get so these are the faces these are the, the the issues that they are they they are facing today today you elect a member of the house of representative into the into the house of you know in, into government he doesn't know convinced he's, he's confused he doesn't know the steps to take you know in order to develop you know his community all he thinks uh, development is all about like sending out trucks of rice to his constituency no you need to teach you need, you need to teach them how to fish you can't just keep on like you know giving them out to doling out you know food items to them what they need is skills wow Bilal, we want to say at this point, thank you so much for being a part of the show this morning. It's my pleasure, Godwin. All right, we'll go for this short break and when we come back, we'll be talking more even on this table about Nigerian and development. Please stay with us as the show continues in a moment.